Miss Pfeiffer, at the age of 26, you had a near-death experience. How did it come about? At that time, I was with my former boyfriend on the Sinai Peninsula. There we were on holiday, and we were living in a cottage on the beach, and all was very good. Then one day, it was on the third day about, I ate something wrong. Afterwards, I knew that this led to food poisoning. But at that time, I did not think too much about it. The symptoms appeared at noon, and they actually became really bad when everyone was sleeping. My boyfriend was sleeping. The whole beach section was empty. And only then did I realize that something was not quite right. I suffered unbelievable pains till finally nothing but blood was excreted and I was really very sick. Then at one point inside this cottage, I noticed that inside my body something had come to a standstill and it felt to me as if gear wheels would fit into each other and I realized that now something was going to happen that should not happen. So I looked to the other side of the cottage where I discovered a little bottle of water and a voice within me said, Andrea, you have to drink this water now because if you do not, it will be you will be facing death. And all this was very clear to me at that moment. Unfortunately, I was already so weakened at this stage that I neither could stand up nor make myself noticed. And because of this circumstance, it was a, a lost opportunity for me. Thereupon, I suddenly noticed movement to my right. So I turned my head, seeing that somebody was sitting there in my bed. This was a presence, a being with human traits, but also not of human nature, a young man with ethereal features, as if, it filled, as if filled with light and with incredibly beautiful, dark, brown, and very kind eyes. I, the first emotion I brought, I had was a kind of recognition. I recognized him. I don't know why. It was a kind of feeling, oh, it's you. I was so happy to meet him again. Another thing was that my body awareness was completely missing. From the moment on when he, when my consciousness, my body consciousness was just about eliminated. Then we, has, we started to communicate with each other, but in nonverbal communication, which was not telepathic, but it was rather an emotional exchange of information between us. And I knew that this friend, this being, will ne would now accompany me in, into the world beyond and on my way to death. The first thing that happened then was that my inter all my interpersonal relationships were fanned like a deck of cards right before my eyes. And this made me scrutinize each individual relation. And in this way, I was able to make peace with them. Some of them were childhood friends. Some of them were only brief encounters, which I had already long forgotten, but obviously somehow seemed to be of importance for me. But also my family played an important part. The whole experience was comparable with a mental work setting in order to make peace with every human being. And having reached this goal, I felt peace in my heart. In a spirit of reconciliation with all of them, and what was really a great thing, or great feeling. And after that, I was thrown into outer space, floating there together with this being beside me. And I was looking down upon my life from there, and it was comparable with my whole life in the form of a globe.
But not in chronological order, from the cradle to the grave, but it was my whole lived life, at the same moment in time, and in this way I was experiencing this, being aware of the fact that, that now I will leave behind this beautiful life. And I tried to find out what it feels like to do so. What has raised, a, what, which raised a deep sadness in me, bubbling to the surface. The sadness was caused by an incredibly deep regret that I did not leave my mark on the world because I did not share my gifts with the world. And because at that time I had already made music, I have always preferred to keep my music hidden because I did not dare to share it. I was shy, I always thought that I was not good enough, and now I had the feeling that I neither had been generous enough to share this gift, nor had I left my mark on the world. And the fact that I did not give myself to my, and also this deep sadness and regret were so fatal that I was forced back into my body. And so I was lying again in the bed when a kind of struggle, almost a fright, had started. Because in no way did I want to go back into my body. So I approached this being and I remembered that I made every attempt to motivate this being to give me still more time simply in order to be able to fulfill this task. I threatened him, I was begging him, I tried to trick him, I tried to negotiate, I really pulled out all the stops. But he was just looking at me with the eyes of an unbelievable love, just replying, I understand you, I love you, but you have to go back. And so at some point I realized that all my endeavors were in vain and that it was unbelievable, but I had to go back. And this is, fact is really unalterable. And the love and sympathy he was emanating finally made me say, okay, then it is now time to go back. And just by doing that, when going back into my body, I suddenly perceived that I, that a second body inside my earthly body, that second body was like, I felt each individual cell of it. Each individual cell was filled with light. And this body of light had freed itself from my earthly body when floating up by moving backwards, then exploding in ecstasy and an outburst of an uncontrollable joy. And then there was a bang and I was floating in an infinite sea of light. Uh, of light, of love, blessedness, endless freedom, and also awareness. It was like an overarching consciousness. And there was no longer neither question nor answers. Everything was just like I've experienced it. And everything was exactly right. And on the one side, I was this all of overarching, endless ocean, and on the other side, I was still a small spark, somehow still having some self-awareness. I was both of it simultaneously. It was incredible. There were no words to express this. I was at home. I was at home indeed. How did you come back again? I don't know how long it was that I was feeling this. It was an overarching dream, but at some point there was a kind of wave originating from one direction and moving through this endless ocean. And when this wave had swept in my body, 
I was suddenly back in my body. I opened my eyes, and I was back again in my sick body in this dark hut. And outside, the day was already dawning, and I knew I will survive. What impact did this experience have on you, on your personal growth? First thing I experienced was, on the one hand, a kind of unpleasant feeling to be back again in my body. And, uh, and this was really unpleasant. And after this endless freedom in the light, it was a kind of shock because I was part of this endless ocean and nevertheless also part of this decision. With this in mind, it was logical for me that I had to go back. But from this moment on, the feeling of happiness has always accompanied me. And when I was not doing so well one day, I was often yearning for a return to this home on the other side of the major impact was that I have lost the fear of death because you do not need to be afraid of what will happen afterwards and because we can look forward to death. So I'm looking forward to going back. However, it has also left behind a very strong awareness of my own mortality. And actually, I'm always accompanied by it and this struggle has influenced me strongly. And what I now know is I do not want to experience this again. When I will be again on my deathbed, looking back on my life, I would like to say, yes, it was fine. I gave everything and I was a pure gift of myself. And now I'm allowed to die. Now I'm ready to go. The second thing that this has a great impact on me was the issue of my first CD about a year and a half ago because, well, the penny dropped and because now I try to express myself in my music and clearly and as authentically as possible. And because in doing so, I'm able to offer myself because my whole being in music for is really what I am. Miss Pfeiffer, thank you very much for the interview. Oh, it has been my great pleasure.